Good morning. Good morning, and welcome to worship at Good Shepherd. We welcome as well those who will worship this morning by watching our live stream broadcast or by watching our rebroadcast later in the week, either on the internet or on local cable. Uh, welcome to you here as well. Just a few announcements, and I invite you to look in your bulletin at the announcements yourselves. First, I want you to please take note of the insert that's in your bulletin. The youth who are going to Houston, Texas this summer for the ELCA Youth Gathering are holding another fundraiser. They are bringing back something that had been done, they think, nine years ago. is when it was done last, Angel Treat Boxes. They're boxes of holiday baking, um, some tasty treats. And so they are busy, going to be busy baking. And you're invited to order them now, though, or in the days to come. And so the order form is what's at the bottom of the information sheet. Uh, you can purchase one or more for yourselves, or and then you'll have less baking to do. Or you can order one or more for someone else. You can have them delivered to somebody at uh, the nursing home or at assisted living or somewhere else. And if you order one for someone who lives in the Wells community, uh, the group that are going to the youth gathering will actually do the delivery for you as well. And payments can be made. That's the one thing that's not on here for information. If you want to order one and pay with a check, you can make it out to Good Shepherd and we'll get it into the youth fund that the kids... And they're doing a great job. They are getting very close to being done with all their fundraising. So kind of exciting. We're near in the end. We just have a few more things planned. We're going to do a fundraiser after Christmas to con complete raising the funds for the two chaperones. But they've had a great time raising funds and thank you for the support. And so please think about supporting them this way if you want some holiday goodies. This past Thursday our congregation hosted the annual Wells Area Thanksgiving dinner. And a special thanks to all who helped out with the meal in any way. We had a lot of people donate food, come in the days before to help prepare and set the tables and then help serve and clean up. And a big thank you goes to the chairs of the event, Joanne Corman and Lorraine Stern, who put so much time and effort into that once again. Don't have a number yet? I'll get a number for you probably next week. We'll put it in the bulletin on how many got served with that meal. With Thanksgiving past us, we already look forward a little bit to the upcoming Christmas holiday. And we want you to take note early and see that the worship committee has changed the Christmas Eve worship schedule. It's printed in your bulletin, so make sure you take that home and get it on your calendars. One little twist is that Christmas Eve falls on a Sunday this year. And so we will have Sunday morning worship that day on December 24th. It'll be an Advent worship service at 9 a.m. And then we will have two Christmas Eve worship services at 5 p.m. as normal. But then we're going to have no late night service that night. We're going to have it instead at 7 p.m. So please take note of that change. Special welcome to Stacy Thompson, who is here from Blue Earth playing piano for us. And with that, then, we will continue worship by singing our opening hymn, it's going to be out of your red hymnal. We'll sing together hymn number 670. Please rise as we sing.
then we continue worship with the confession and forgiveness, which is printed on the front of your bulletin. We gather for worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God comes to the help of the people, turning us from sin, turning us to live for God. God gifts us with power through the Holy Spirit to confess our sins, to receive forgiveness, and to grow into faithful servants. Let us confess our sins. Faithful God, our lack of faith has brought us to places where you are hard for us to see. We have to put ourselves before others. We have failed to follow you. Forgive us for all living such small lives, O Lord, and restore in us the wonder of what it is to be your people. God is faithful. God is merciful. God does not hold our sins against us. For this we give you thanks, O Lord. Receive the assurance of your deliverance by the one who seeks us and finds us to this very day. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer of the day. Holy Lord, often we wander far from you, yet you are always there to lead us home. Guide us today and bring us into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time I invite you to be seated and I invite kids to come forward for a kid's message. Your sister got confused, so you gotta go get her here. She didn't know where you went. <laughs> she smiled when she saw you. She's excited to sit with you. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. Good to see you. Everybody a little sleepy? Is that turkey still making you tired? Huh? You didn't have turkey. Oh boy. You had ham. Okay, good. Well, I'm glad to see you all. Today, our Bible story is about another one of our Bible superheroes. And today, our story is about a man named Jeremiah. We've been reading every single week about another superhero in the Bible. Today, it's Jeremiah. And Jeremiah said this, and it's something I think we can all memorize. We can learn it by heart. Jeremiah said, when you call on God... God will hear you. I think that's simple enough that they can even learn it by heart. Okay? So let's see if we can learn that one by heart. It's, when you call on God, God will hear you. Can we say that together? When you call on God, God will hear you. Okay, so I have my phone. And it said, when you call on God, God will hear you. So let's call God. What's the phone number? Is it 1-800-CALL-GOD? Or maybe 553-HEAVEN? What's the phone number? Jeremiah said, when you call on God, God will hear you. God has no phone number. What do you think it is? 553. I said 553-HEAVEN, maybe. What's God's phone number? 553 heaven. Should I try that? Let's see what I get. 553 H E A V E N. Let's see. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. That's what she said. Okay? So what's God's phone number? Jeremiah said, when you call on God, God will hear you. There's no phone number? Do we use a phone to talk to God, to call on God? How do we call on God then if we don't use our phone? You pray. 
right? Very good. So how do we pray? When you call on God, God will hear you. How do you pray? I want to call on God because I want God to hear me. How do we pray? Do we fold our hands? And you say wonderful things, okay? You fold your hands and you say wonderful things. So what kind of wonderful things should we say to God? Thank you, God, for creating people. That's a good prayer. Let's pray it right now. Ready? Hold your hands. Thank you, God, for creating people. Amen. 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 That was a good prayer, wasn't it? So do you think that we can only pray when we're at church? When you call on God, God will hear you. You can pray anywhere. So you don't have to be in church to pray. You can pray anywhere. You can be in bed and pray. Wow. So you can be in bed. You can be in church. You can, in a car. In a camper. An RV. You can be in a lot of places and pray, right? So you don't have to be in church. You can even be in a boat. You can be a lot of places to pray. You can go behind a tree and pray, he says. So you can and truck so you can go be in a lot of places. So anywhere, you can be anywhere and pray. And can you only pray in the morning? No. You can pray at night. Does it the You at night and in the middle of the day? Night Yep, all those times so you can pray anytime. So we know you can pray anywhere. At any place. Now you had us lead, you just led us in a wonderful prayer. And you said we pray wonderful things. Does God only want to hear like wonderful things like about puppies and love? Can you, should you only pray about like joyful things? Yeah. Only joyful things. Uh -uh. What else can you pray about? Wonderful, wonderful things like puppies yeah. and love. family you can talk to God about your day what if your day hasn't gone well what if it what if things are just not the most smiley like what if you can still tell talk to God about those things what if I'm angry or sad can I talk to God about those things okay so we've said that you can when you call on God God will hear you said Jeremiah we can talk to God anywhere, anytime, about anything. <clears throat> Do I only have to fold my hands and say it out loud? You can say it in your head. You can even say it softly. Can I sing it? Can I sing a prayer? Can I sing a prayer? There's a lot of sung prayers, aren't there? Our musician says yes. That that's the way we sing prayers. That's what a hymn really is, right? When we sing songs, right? Oh God, we sing, How great thou art. How I know you're laughing because I'm not a singer. How great thou art, right? That's a song that is a prayer in many ways. See, our piano player said yes. So we can sing it, we can pray it softly. We can shout it, God, I'm not happy right now, help me. Right? Do you think you can do that? Or do you think God doesn't want us to be angry? I think we can even say that. Right? Or we can say it silently in our heads. Anytime, anywhere, anything, any way, we can call on God. And what does Jeremiah say? When you call on God, God will hear you and listen right so we learned a lot today and we don't even need to know the phone number do we let's put our hands together let's pray okay we won't sing it because you'll just laugh because I'm not a singer okay let's pray dear God thank you for hearing our prayers 
Thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Thanks for coming up. No Sunday school today. It's a holiday weekend, so if you want to return to your seats. Thanks for coming up. The psalm today is Psalm 66, verses 1 through 12, and we will read it responsibly. Uh, we will start with the light print, and you will say the dark print. Make a joyful noise to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great power, your enemies cringe before you. All the All earth, earth worships, worships you. They sing, sing praises, praises to you. Sing, sing praises, praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds among mortals. He turned, he turned the, the sea into, into dry land. land. They, they passed, passed through, through the river on foot. There were rejoicing him. Who rules by his might forever. Whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let the rebellious not exalt themselves. Bless, Bless our God, O peoples. peoples. Let, Let the sound, sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For, For you, O oh God, God, have tested us. You, you have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us to the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You put the people right, right over our heads. heads. We, we went, went through, through the fire and through the, and through the water. Yet you, you have brought us out to a spacious place, place. place. Here ends the psalm reading. It was wonderful having Nathan lead our psalm today. A reading now from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29. Praise to you, O Lord. Just a sentence first about where we are in our reading. At one point, the people of God were conquered by the Babylonians. King Nebuchadnezzar forced the people to leave Israel and to live in Babylon as captives, living in exile. Jeremiah was a prophet that God sent to his people while they were living there in exile, out of the Holy Land and over in Babylon. And this is his message to the people. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests and the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives, have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. Give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there. Don't decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams they dream. For it is a lie they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you. And I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For I surely know the plans I have made for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I've driven you, says the Lord. 
I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. A few weeks ago, my friend Sarah visited from Iowa. She was actually um, my intern supervisor's daughter. She was a teenager back when I was on internship, and now she is a principal and a mom and a wife. And so it was great pleasure to have her visit a few weeks ago, and we went out to eat. And at one point, I excused myself to go use the restroom, and, and I found my way finally to the hallway where the restrooms are. I just saw a sign that said restrooms. And I got down the hall, and I was met with two doors, no signs. And I thought, cool. They have a full-size Marilyn Monroe on one door and a full-size Elvis on another door. And I pushed open the Elvis door, and I got inside the room, and it didn't look familiar at all, at all. I'm not used to seeing a wall full of urinals, and I jumped out of the bathroom quickly, and I realized, oh, those pictures don't stand for your favorite dead celebrity. <laughs> okay? My problem, I like Elvis better than Marilyn. My point, I felt seriously out of place for a moment and terribly embarrassed. The first thing I did was look to see if anybody saw me. <clears throat> the only thing that makes me feel more uncomfortable is when I end up at a pastor's continuing education event like I did just a few weeks ago when I went to lacrosse for the bishop's convocation. He brings all the pastors together at a continuing ed event, and I normally like them. I love the chance to get together with my colleagues. But the latest fad is for speakers to stop in the middle of a lecture and say, now turn to the person next to you and discuss your feelings about what I've just said. OK? And I always feel like the speaker says, now turn to the total stranger next to you and tell them your deepest, darkest secrets, something you've never told anybody else in your whole life. And I feel like I would rather walk into the men's room at a bar, okay, than sit and open up my feelings to someone that I'm not comfortable with. And I feel seriously out of place at times like that. Today's Bible story, which tells us this, some of what Jeremiah the prophet wrote to the people, he was seriously out of place. When God chose Jeremiah to be a prophet, Jeremiah described himself, and not from the reading here, but from earlier, he described himself as only a boy. Scholars estimate that he was chosen to be a prophet at the age of 17. The 17-year-old prophet was called by God to preach to the people a message that wasn't going to be easy for the people to hear. God wanted him to go to the people and say, God will punish you if you're disobedient. And the people of God were scared. They were preparing for a big battle with the Babylonians who were at that point surrounding their entire country. And Jeremiah got up and preached and said, you think this is bad? It's going to get much worse. A 17-year-old telling that message. Who wants to hear a message like that, especially from a little punk? Okay? Jeremiah didn't speak the words that the people wanted to hear. But he spoke the words God said that they needed to hear. Even if it made him feel uncomfortable, God felt like he was up to the task. With a message like that, then no one, no one, like Jeremiah, but what Jeremiah predicted happened. And that's what happens, what we read about then in our Bible reading for today. The Babylonians were surrounding Israel, and the people of Israel lost the battle. They lost the battle to the Babylonians, who not only took over the territory of Judah, but then they said, you can't live here anymore, and marched them back to Babylon. 
and said, you have to leave Jerusalem, you have to leave your land, and you're going to live now in Babylon. They were separated from other people they knew, separated from their familiar customs and their religious faith, and had to live somewhere else and be outsiders. They were penniless. Most people thought they'd never see their homes again, and they felt hopeless in that whole situation. Now, it's important to know that the people of God believed that God lived in one place. Not that God walked with them in their hearts, wherever they went. They believed <clears throat> that God lived in the temple in Jerusalem, and especially in the altar that they had, which they called an ark, and it was shaped just like this, a box about this size. The Ark of the Covenant that contained the tablets that Moses was given with the Ten Commandments on it were put inside the altar, <clears throat> and it was there, the people thought, that God lived. And that's why they came to the temple to worship there. And when they were marched off to Babylon to live there, they felt like they were cut off from God's presence. And the most confusing part of all of this is when Jeremiah the prophet spoke to them and said, suggested to them, that God sent them into exile. God sent us away from God? Jeremiah said, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all exiles, whom I have sent you into exile from Jerusalem into Babylon. God this, did this to us? The people wondered, and then they felt even more hopeless. Jerusalem is gone from us. God is gone from us. And then Jeremiah tells us that God did this, and then God gave them a new message. Jeremiah preached them a new sermon. Before that, he'd preached to them about warning, that, you know, things are going to get much, much worse. But then Jeremiah wrote them a letter, sent it from Jerusalem to Babylon, and he said this. This is part of God's plan, okay? You may be exiled from your homes, but you're not exiled from God, he said. And then he changed from a warning into a message of hope. It was a, like a letter from a loved one far away. And his first words were advice. And it was kind of like saying this. It's kind of a modern day saving, saying kind of from the 60s and 70s. Bloom where you are planted. Ever heard that advice? I think it's back from the 60s, 70s. Bloom where you're planted. Because what did he say to them? He said this, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Uh, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may be your children. Multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and I pray to the Lord on its behalf. Jeremiah's message. God put you here. Bloom and blossom where you're planted. I know the plans I have for you, said God, he wrote later in the letter. God plants us and always has the intent of producing something wonderful and amazing and beautiful in whatever situation you end up in life. So the question you should ask yourselves, will you bloom where you're planted today? Will you bloom in the situation you find yourself in now? A story. Sit back, it's kind of long. Okay? This story also comes from my friend Sarah, who was with me a few weeks ago. Sarah's grandpa, Melvin, had lived in Rudd, Iowa, much of his adult life. And Sarah's grandma had died, she died about 10 years ago. Okay? And so then Grandpa Melvin was a widower. And in the midst of his life, as it continued on, someone introduced Grandpa Melvin to Betty. Now, Betty is a cute elderly gal, originally from Dubuque, Iowa. Now, shortly after Grandpa Melvin and Betty dated and then got married, they decided together that they were done with winter, okay, here in the Northland, and they packed up and they moved down to Arizona. 
They had several good years down there in Arizona until Betty's memory started faltering. And then her physical health started failing as well. And so finally, <clears throat> Betty's kids visited them down in Arizona and sat down together with Melvin. And they said this to Melvin. Melvin, we're taking mom home to Dubuque with us. You can stay here in Arizona, or you can come with her back to Dubuque. But either way, we've made the decision that mom should be in Dubuque. Melvin had some decisions to make. And he finally said to them, I don't want to leave. I'm happy down here in Arizona. But Betty is my wife, and I love her, and of course, I'm coming. So Betty's children found an assisted living facility in Dubuque, and Melvin and Betty got moved in. And that was the beginning of Grandpa Melvin's exile. Okay? He was moved to a place that he'd never lived before. He'd never lived in Dubuque, Iowa before. He never liked hospitals or nursing homes. And moving to Dubuque was not his idea, not at all what he wanted in his final years. And he could have easily become angry or bitter, Melvin could have. He could have complained about Betty's children who forced this situation upon him. He could have lashed out to the staff at the facility that they live he could have brought everyone down with him. We've all seen people who react like that, right? But Grandpa Melvin chose a different path. He chose to work and to pray. He worked hard to give Betty the best care that she could possibly have. He took her to exercise classes, and he struggled with her so she would still eat every day, feeding her most of her meals. <clears throat> and eventually, Betty had to be moved into the adjoining uh, memory care unit that's in that whole facility. And then Grandpa Melvin walked down the hall and visited her, spent most of his day with her every day. And then another goal that he had as he lived there was to bring joy to the other residents in the assisted living center in the nursing home. He started an exercise class in the memory care unit. He joked with the other residents. He also became the go-to person when there was a particularly crabby resident. They would say to him, the staff would pull him aside and said, they'd say, Melvin, we're going to change where you're seated for dinner tonight in the dining room. We have a new resident, Bob, who's having a difficult time adjusting. Will you sit by Bob at dinner at mealtimes from now on? Can you help him out? And all of this was a part of his goal as well, to help the staff out. He learned the names of all the staff, and he helped them out in every way possible, and he learned about their lives just at the same time that he shared with them the story of his life. Now, the prophet Jeremiah said, in my paraphrase, grow, grow where you are planted. Work and pray for the situation that you're in now, because if things go well there, things will go well for you continually. Grandpa Melvin found meaning and, and purpose in his life, even though he was in exile in Dubuque, Iowa, okay? Not in the situation that he ever imagined that he'd be in. And he bloomed in that situation. And he improved the lives of the people around him. He even improved the quality of his own life. And the rest of the story for Melvin is this, and this is the part that Sarah updated me on when I visited with her. Betty died, and Grandpa Melvin misses her terribly. And now as his health is failing, he still continues to stay there in Dubuque because it became home for him. But now, just recently, <clears throat> he has realized that he needs to live, not in the assisted living unit, but in a nursing home part of that whole facility. He needs more care. And so recently when they were discussing this move, and he knew he needed a higher level of care, he asked the staff, 
how much is this going to cost for me to live there now? And the administrator of the facility said this to him. Melvin, don't worry about it. You've done so much for us in these past years. We'll take care of it. Just as Jeremiah said, grow where you are planted. Work and pray for the situation you're in now because if things go well, they will go well for you. Some of us are in exile. We are not in the part of life that we thought we'd be. This is not the story we thought we'd be in for many of us. Some of us are grieving and never thought we would be missing our loved one at this point in life. And we're trying to figure out kind of a new normal for life. Some are in exile while you're battling health problems and you realize that this is not the story you thought you'd be living at doctor's offices rather than in the tennis court. Okay? Some are in exile in their work, having a job you don't like, a job you don't want until retirement. Jeremiah says this. Jeremiah says, trust in God at this point in life. Bloom where you are planted. Make the most of the situation you find yourself in at this point in life. At whatever point or place you find yourself in today. And Jeremiah said, the Lord has said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. To give you a future and to give you hope. We are part of something that is bigger than ourselves. Something that stretches beyond our lifetime. And so that should take the pressure off of us. It's not all up to us. We call that grace. And grace gives us hope, which helps us even when those unrealized dreams may come to us. And so we put our trust in God's hope for a good future. In the meantime, take the advice of Jeremiah. Build homes. Plant gardens. Love your family. Pray. Work. Take joy in the life that you are in now because you will always have hope. Because God has plans. Big plans. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we are grateful that you have plans for us, for all of us, for your good world. Help us to live into that to trust that it is what you hope for us, and it is hope that extends far beyond what we can see. We trust in you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing together hymn number 855 in your red hymnal.
to turn then to the front of your red hymnal to page 105 and then rise as together we confess our common faith and belief using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please turn to one another and share your peace with them. As you place your offering in the basket, please remember that your generous gifts provide us with the equipment and monthly subscription services to be able to air our worship live on the internet and record it for viewing of the television throughout the week. We also have a great crew of volunteers who take the worship service. Their faithful service, along with your offering dollars, help us reach out our, reach our worship services to your numerous homes and together we reach out with God's love. Thank you for your generous giving. sing our offertory response and it's hymn 779.
Grateful for God's extravagant love, we pray now. We pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. God, I promise you have made it clear to us that you will always be faithful to us. Help us to believe, to trust in you, God, knowing that you have hope beyond what we can see. Lord, in your mercy, help us to build a home in whatever situation we find ourselves in today. Show us how to nurture our lives and our faith in this situation and in this place in life. And then help us to give back to those around us. Lord, in your mercy, restore to wholeness all those who lack anything in life, all those who suffer. Today we pray for Jan Helfritz and her family who surround her. We pray as well for Irene Niebuhr, Carol Jacobson, Jerry and Fran Wilder, Marlene Sievers, Bebo Getchell, as well as all those whom we name now silently in our hearts. Bless them with strength, with peace, with healing. We lift up in our prayers as well those who serve in the military, our loved ones who are serving in the military here and overseas, and we pray, God, that you would give them strength for their service and keep them safe in your care. Lord, in your mercy, with full confidence in your mercy and your love, we pray all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. We sing our final hymn, hymn number 537. Just a reminder now that Coffee Fellowship is being served downstairs. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.